Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going over AT&T stock, their most recent Q4 2021 earnings report. We're going to go over the earnings, we're going to go over the stock valuation, and determine if this stock is worth buying or if you should stay away. Now before we get into the details, smash the like button, it really helps the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Now let's get into it. AT&T starts off their earnings report presentation with accomplishments they had in 2021 for the full year. So the first one is that they grew their customer relationships. They delivered mobility postpaid phone net ads of 3.2 million. They added more than a million fiber subscribers, and they grew HBO Max and HBO's global subscriber base by more than 13 million to hit 73.8 million. They were effective and efficient in everything they do, they believe, by achieving $3 billion of the $6 billion run rate cost savings target they put out. They improved customer experience with higher NPS, lower churn in mobility and broadband, and they rationalized low margin wireline services. And lastly, capital allocation. They announced or closed more than $50 billion in asset monetization. They generated $26.8 billion in free cash flow, and they repositioned capital structure for future success. Next, they go over their priorities for 2022, this new year. First is to grow customer relationships, 5G, wireless. They want to expand simplified go-to-market strategy to under-penetrated segments. For fiber, they want to expand the fiber footprint to accelerate the growth. For HBO Max, they want to expand international reach and continue investing in world-class content. They want to go from $3 billion to $4 billion in the cost savings target they had of the $6 billion in 2022. They want to deliver improved customer experience, continue the NPS gains and low churn across all the business aspects. They want to expand their business opportunities with fiber expansion and product simplification. And they want to continue to have great capital allocation, increase investments in growth opportunities, being fiber and 5G, reduce the net debt to reach two and a half times by the end of 2023, and provide an attractive dividend in the eight to nine billion dollars per year range post Warner Media transaction. And for all of those people that do hold AT&T as a dividend play, eight to nine billion is a very healthy number. They're expecting about 20 billion of free cash flow post the Warner Media assets moving over and merging with Discovery. So eight to nine billions, you know, under 50% of the expected free cash flow. Now let's look at the most recent quarter. Fourth quarter 2021, subscriber gains in areas of their market focus. So they break this into wireless, fiber, and HBO Max. As far as wireless in the most recent quarter, the fourth quarter, they hit 67.3 million postpaid phone subscribers. This is up from a quarter ago at 66.4, and if we're going a year back, it was 64.2. This has been steadily increasing. And when looking at net ads, this quarter they added 884,000 more subscribers. And this is compared to a year ago where they only added 800,000, still a very great uh, addition, but the point is the growth is actually accelerating. So that's extremely important. As far as churn rate, it is slightly higher than a year ago at 0.85% versus 0.76%. But that said, the overall number, they're clearly adding much more than the churn. So that is why every single quarter, the total subscriber number has been increasing. Next, let's move on to fiber. This is a, a high growth business for them, at and fiber subscribers. They hit 6 million subscribers this quarter. This is up from 5.7 million last quarter, or if we go a year ago, they had 5 million subscribers. As far as net ads in the quarter, they had 271,000 new ads. This is a little down from 273,000 new ads a year ago, but obviously the trend is continuing to increase. They're at 37% penetration. There's still a lot of room to grow from there. As far as HBO Max is concerned, it is also steadily growing. A year ago, they had 60.6 .6 million subscribers, HBO uh, Max and HBO combined. And now at this most recent quarter, they've hit 73.8 million, of which 46.8 million are domestic subscribers. So we actually did see the domestic subscriber number go up from the last quarter to this quarter. And this is good to see since it did drop in 2Q21, there was 47 million 
uh, domestic subscribers, and that dropped down to 45.2 million, even though the overall number did increase that quarter over quarter because it was made up for in the international growth. Well, in this quarter, we went up to 46.8 million in domestic, bringing the domestic subscriber base a little higher again. And the overall number uh, continued to rise because there was also growth internationally. And from management comments, it's clear that they see a lot of potential to grow HBO Max internationally. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that as a big focus in 2022. Now let's go over the financial summary. When it comes to adjusted earnings per share, they were $0.78 cents this quarter. A year ago, it was $0.75, cents, so we did have a little bit of an increase. The adjusted uh, operating income margin was 16.2%, slightly down from a year ago at 17.1%. When it comes to total revenue, they did $41 billion in revenue this quarter. A year ago, they did $45.7 billion. But keep in mind, the revenue, not including video, did increase because the video impact uh, actually was pretty significant. It was around $6.7 billion in the fourth quarter of 2020. And this most recent quarter, it was really video was only about $400 million or so. So the increase of revenue excluding video went from $39 billion in the fourth quarter of 2020 to $40.6 billion. So the core business is very healthy. And I think direct-to-consumer is going to make revenue go much higher uh, going forward. But if we look at cash flow, this is a really great number to see how healthy a business is. They had $8.7 billion of free cash flow, and then they had $3.8 billion in CapEx, so totaling $11.3 billion, basically. They also make clear, though, that $1.3 billion uh, of the $8.7 billion of free cash flow was from DirecTV classified as investing. So they are spending more on capital expenditures, $3.8 billion versus a year ago, $2.4 billion. They do have higher free cash flow, $8.7 billion this quarter versus fourth quarter of 2020 being $7.7 billion. Now, when you just get to the bottom line, the reported EPS for this quarter was $0.69. Cents. Uh, a year ago, it was a loss of $1.95. The adjusted EPS a year ago was $0.75, cents, whereas this quarter was $0.78. Cents. Now, looking at how the dividend payout ratio for 2021 ended up being, even though it had such a high dividend payout, it was actually only 56% payout ratio, so extremely healthy. Uh, very easily, they were able to afford paying it. And it will become under 50% when they do cut the dividend after they take the Warner Bros. Uh, and Warner Media assets and move them over and merge them with uh, Discovery. So for Warner Bros. Discovery. Now, that is because they're going to be losing about $5 billion in free cash flow after that leaves AT&T. Therefore, they do want to reduce the dividend and build a better balance sheet, reduce debt, etc. Now, fourth quarter 2021 communication segment, they do break this off separate from the Warner Media segment, so we can kind of look at the individual businesses and determine how they're doing. Starting with mobility, it had strong revenue, EBITDA, and subscriber gains this most recent quarter, $21.1 billion of revenue, of which $7.4 billion was EBITDA, uh, earnings 35% margin on that $21.1 billion. This is an increase from a year ago where it was $20.1 billion instead of $21.1 billion, so a billion dollar increase year over year. Uh, and the earnings were $7.1 billion, a 35.3%, so basically the same margin rate, but with the increased revenue, a slightly higher amount of earnings. Uh, so that's pretty good, $300 million more in earnings. For the business wireline, they did come down in revenue from $6.3 billion to $5.9 billion, but the earnings actually remained pretty stable, coming in at $2.2 billion instead of $2.3 billion a year ago, with a slightly higher margin, 37.5% over 37%. And lastly, for Consumer Wireline, it also remained pretty stable. The margin's very close, 32.5% a year ago, 31.3% this year in this quarter. And it went up from $3.1 billion to $3.2 billion with earnings of a billion dollars uh, a year ago and again now with a slightly lower margin rate and a slightly higher revenue. We then look at the Warner Media segment. First, Warner Media's revenue went from $8.6 billion in the fourth quarter of 2020 
to 9.9 .9 billion this quarter year later, so increased revenue. As far as the earnings, they did drop from 2.7 billion a year ago in the fourth quarter to 1.7 billion. So even though revenue increased, the margin actually went down on the earnings from 31.8% to 17.7% in the most recent quarter. Now the revenue increase was a 15.4% year over year revenue growth. Uh, and this was driven mostly by content licensing and strong direct to consumer subscription growth. The direct to consumer subscription revenue itself grew 11.5% year over year. They point out strong international subscriber growth in Latin America and a successful European launch for HBO Max, which did impact the investment spend of about $500 million year over year. Their direct to consumer subscription revenue going from $1.7 billion last year to $1.9 billion in this quarter. And again, the global HBO Max and HBO subscriber count hitting 73.8 million members this quarter, up from 60.6 million a year ago. They also point out the 2022 content slate is very strong for Warner Bros., which does include the new Batman movie coming out in March, as well as another superhero movie, The Flash, officially hitting theaters, I believe, later this year as well. Now, guidance, the financial outlook for how this year is going to be in 2022. This is a very important slide in every earnings report. A lot of times you can have a great earnings report, but if you don't give good guidance, your stock can be punished. So the revenue guidance, revenue growth, excluding video wireless service revenue growth, low single digits, 3%. Now they expect the Warner Media guidance revenue to be 37 to 39 billion dollars. The EPS adjusted $3.10 to $3.15. They expect for the Warner Media guidance it to be somewhere between 6 to 7 billion dollars of earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization. And as far as the gross capital investments, capital expenditures, they're believing about 24 billion dollar range. Uh, in capital investments and $20 billion for capital expenditures, free cash flow of $23 billion, and they expect the Warner Media contribution to be around $3 billion in free cash flow. I've heard them say before around $5 billion, so I'm a little thrown off if they just believe it's going to be a little less maybe for 2022, or if they were just giving a, a rough guidance when I heard in the past. Now a couple things to point out when I was just looking over some of the numbers. For free cash flow in the most recent quarter, it was $8.7 billion. If you annualize that, that's $34.8 billion in free cash flow, a massive number if you're annualizing the most recent quarter. Also, their reported earnings per share of $2.76 for the full year means that at $24.50 a share, which was around the closing price today, AT&T is currently trading at a price to earnings of only 8.87, which is extremely cheap. And when you're going on an adjusted EPS basis, which would be $3.40 of adjusted EPS, that would bring AT&T to a PE of just 7.2 when you're going off of the adjusted earnings. Lastly, their free cash flow of $26.8 billion for all of 2021 means that you're only paying 12.7 times free cash flow for AT&T's enterprise value. And enterprise value includes the debt because you have to think about the debt that they have and add that to the market cap. Now, while reading through the earnings, John Stanky, the AT&T CEO, said we're at the dawn of a new age of connectivity. Our focus is now to be America's best connectivity provider and also ensure our media assets are positioned to grow and truly become a global media distribution leader. Once we do this, we'll unlock the true value of these businesses and provide a great opportunity for shareholders. Now, personally, I think he's right. We are moving from a world where just cell phones were the primary driver for having cellular service. Today, everything needs connectivity, either in the home with Wi-Fi or on the go with 5G. From smart fridges, automobiles, wearables, I used to pay for just Wi-Fi, then I was paying for Wi-Fi plus cellular, and after many years I started paying for Wi-Fi plus cellular 
plus add my Apple Watch to my cellular, and then it was next my Tesla when I pay monthly for premium connectivity for my car, and soon we're going to be paying for smart glasses that are going to obviously need to connect as well, and the time between adding new products compared to the last product you added is getting shorter and shorter as everything in our world is basically becoming connected to the internet. So there's a lot of future in connectivity and having this 5G network for companies like AT&T. Now going over the valuation again, the biggest issue people have about owning AT&T stock has been their high level of debt. Now that said, when looking at the valuation in terms of a multiple of free cash flow while including the debt by using the enterprise value instead of the market cap, which we discussed before, AT&T stock is only trading at 12.7 times free cash flow. So I believe that's extremely reasonable since the core business remains healthy. There's a lot of upside on the Warner Media side with the upcoming merger with Discovery and international growth. And I believe the stock represents a lot of value at the current price because they're going to be reducing debt, so making that enterprise value come down as their balance sheet gets better and the multiples start to look more attractive. And the Warner Media assets, once they're not tied to AT&T, will be able to fetch a much higher multiple on their own, the same way a Netflix or a Disney multiple is going on their streaming businesses. Now, AT&T's current share price at the close today on Thursday, January 27th was $24.25, down 8.4% almost. Their 52-week high was $33.88, and their 52-week low is $22. And even the $33.52 week high is extremely low compared to where they were not that far before that. The stock is currently trading close to the 52-week low after today's 8.4% drop. It has a high dividend yield of 8.58%, which they can pay no problem with slightly over 50% payout ratio, but don't get fooled. It will get cut in half, but it will be a healthy high dividend even after it's cut in half. And that will happen once the Warner Media assets are moved and merged with Discovery. So thank you for watching. If you made it to the end, please like the video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe. Until next time.